is enough! You like it? You like my ingenious way of avoiding and bypassing Nintendo's copyright claims and totally not because I don't have an Elgato or whatever? Think of this as a callback to my first video on this channel, the Monster Inc. Inc. one. I wasn't planning on making a video on this game, but since I finally got myself a Switch, I've been playing the heck out of it. I might as well make a quick one, right? <laughs> Plus this game came out recently, correct? An entire month ago. Oh well, nothing new on this channel. Alright, so from the outset, um, many people kind of complain that this game is too much like the first one, but since I haven't played the first Splatoon, I really regret not getting it, I'm kind of thankful. Game's fun. Game's addicting. I love the unique twist on a team-based online shooter. Turf War is the main attraction, and it is a game mode where Basically, you and three other teammates have to go up against another team of four, splatter as much ink everywhere as possible, and try to stop them from doing the same thing. And you get to shoot each other with, like, squirt gun-ish looking things, paint pails, and giant oversized brushes, or whatever. It's really unique and interesting. The shooting mechanics really feel like they're really based on spacing and environmental knowledge. It doesn't really feel that much like a reflex shooter, it's like, like you have to be on your toes, but it's mostly like trying to work with space, and pretty much because your weapons don't go like infinitely far, it like only goes out a certain amounts, so you have to like swim up to people and splash them or whatever. It's a very unique take on the shooter, like, if you are asked to think of a new online multiplayer shooter with a interesting new twist to put on it, you probably wouldn't stray far from the usual, like, maybe we can add, do things with verticality, or melee combat, or or unique destruction physics, but, but Nintendo worked their magic, and did something so radical, so unique, but yet so good and, like, ingenious in hindsight, but I love it. So yeah, as said, Turf War is the main attraction, which implies there are others. So, yeah, there are more objective-focused game modes and ranked and league battles. If you don't mind being judged by a breakable progress bar in a letter grade, these add a nice variety and more competitive nature to the mix. And so, yeah, so, um, my first complaint. These are ranked, but, um, why isn't Turf War ranked? Is it not considered good or balanced enough to be competitive? This whole game was built from the ground up for Turf War. I checked online forums and... Most people agree Turf War is completely fine for competitive play. It's more open-ended nature could allow for planning and team communication and other strategies, but it probably has way more strategic possibilities than the head bashing against the brick wall slosher fest, whatever the crap tower control is. That game mode sucks, in my opinion. Maybe I should just need to get good rather than judge it with just a handful of matches. I believe Splattering Grounds is a great mode, trying to keep specific areas inked, which I think that adds to the core gameplay. I haven't played Rainmaker yet, but it looks like some kind of Capture the Flag affair where you actually have to take the thing to your opponent's spawn, so that's interesting. There's also a fun as heck co-op horde mode known as Salmon Run, where a company that is repeatedly and kind of pretentiously called Sketchy has you fighting these Neanderthalic salmon creatures known as the Salmonids. In order to get these golden eggs by killing their bosses or more powerful enemies. It's very fun and can get very chaotic and stressful. Especially if you get teamed up with idiot teammates who have no idea how to communicate and one goes to the opposite side of the map where the enemies aren't and get themselves killed, which causes a team wipe in the first 20 seconds of the first wave. But when you get going and you get good, awesome teammates and you go and cash out with a new personal best, it feels so good. I both like and dislike the fact that you start each round with a different weapon. 
you can't bring your own gear in, so you like get provided stuff. And there's also like a set for each time Salmon Run opens. I'll talk more about that later. It's nice that it keeps you on your toes and enforces you to have a knowledge on how to use all types of weapons. But I hate it when I get stuck with ones I dislike, like the H3 slow blasters and the sniper charger weapons. I thought I'd love those in the trailers, but they aggravate me every time I have to use them here and in single player. Oh yeah, there's a single player, a story mode, if you will. Have you ever played any shooter campaign and were just like, man, these are all pretty samey and linear. I wonder what it could be like if it was structured like Mario. Well, whoever you are, here you go. If you played the first game single player, it's practically the same thing. I don't know the exact differences, I can't be bothered to look it up, but you fight the same guys in the first game for the same reasons. The Octolings, stealing these zap fishes for power and commence oppressive beatdown. So nothing really dramatically new. The bosses are cool and the environments are satisfyingly weird. Callie, one of the Squid Sisters from the first game, gets kidnapped and also, and there's that. Many people thought that it would be like a twist and that she would turn out to betray Marie and because she won the Splatfest in the last game, which would have been interesting and meta as heck, but though I haven't completed the story yet and don't want to spoil myself on its probably simplistic outcome, I heard this won't be the case. Kinda. The iconic Squid Sisters were these pop star characters that would announce the current stages and events for like the multiplayer and other events that popped up. And these huge events known as Splatfests where you get to choose a side on a subject like pizzas or burgers, summer or winter, chocolate or vanilla, those kinds of subjects. And instead of having a rational civil argument on which is superior, you fight to the death. Which I believe all arguments should be settled that way. The next Splatfest better be Pumpkin Spice vs Eggnog. That's a brilliant idea, please pay me. Anyways, they got replaced by a new duo called Off The Hook and they're cool. My quick opinions on them, Marina. It's nice to see Nintendo adding some diversity to the lineup with her being an Octarian. <coughs> Makes you wonder about the backstory of this whole lore or whatever. And um, question, Why? Is, when is Pearl's bratty forehead going to be a playable map? <coughs> I just want to say that I love the world building in this game. For a new IP that had some troubles on what it was selling to be, they did an excellent job with all these awesome designs, concepts, and everything. If asked which video game world I would like to live in, this would be extremely high on my list. I like how in like all the customizing gear you can get, they actually do have perks attached to them. They're all branded, which is a neat touch. Even the music has like a fictitious artist playing them, like the said duos. I like the main hub, Inkopolis Square. Even though it's lamer and smaller than the first games for some reason, it's where you can get to all the stuff and shops and see other players' Miiverse style comments floating above their heads. Most will be either craft to amazing photorealistic drawings. I am not exaggerating. Sometimes, there will be raids and stupid trends like dumb memes, hashtags, and Tumblrina attention seeking. The current one is hashtag free Cali, which makes me feel guilty about ignoring the single player so much. Alright, so one thing that really bugs me about the overworld is, um, how, like, this restaurant here, you see it? Like, like, there's no entrance. Like, there's no, like, at first I thought this was the entrance, but no, there's no connection. Like, I don't even see any doors anywhere. Like, maybe this little area was pushed by the vending machine. No, that doesn't connect there either. Like, what? there's like no doors anywhere. Like, how do you get in? Is it like a secret club? Do I like go through that vent in the ceiling? Is that like the only way? Like, what? I, I, I what? <laughs> the music is great too. I love these uniquely, creatively weird tracks, especially the one on the Salmon Runs. The only one I dislike has to be the matchmaking tune. It it fits, and I like how you can mess around with it, but the more I hear it, the more I grow to hate it. I'm sorry, it just puts me off. I think, I think I'm getting used to it, though. 
Anything else I could nitpick? Um, I wish there were more maps. Splatoon 1 ended with a lot of them, so I wish they would have recycled more. I get they would want to have a new ones prominent, but then maybe they should have made more rather than making a copy-paste single player. They just released a new stage called Manta Maria. Great stage, plus another one for Salmon Run, but I wish I also brought back maybe a couple of old ones as well. Maybe make it a community thing where players could vote in which old stage will be brought back next. This is running on the same engine with like all the other same things, right? I mean, all they gotta do is like brush up the assets and, and collision graphing, right? I, guess, I don't know. I've been hinting at it, but I almost forgot to bring up this weird thing Splatoon does where you can only play on one of either two stages available for a two hour period before swapping other stages in. It's unusual and annoying, but I understand what they're going for. They want you to play some Turf War for a bit, and when you tire of that, play single player or Salmon Run, or if you're experienced enough, beat single player and Salmon Run is not currently available. Play ranked and league battles, which take place on different modes and maps at the time. I get it, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. Alright, super nitpick. Um, when a match is over, I don't like how the teams are called good guys and bad guys. Like, I thought Turf War was like a sporting event. Are there seriously morals and conflicting ideologies on the line? Okay, a more serious criticism is the emote things. You can use the D-pad buttons to send out calls. There's only two, over here, which can be turned to a help or ouch if you die, and a booyah. There should be more. It would make communicating with randos a lot easier and expandable, especially since voice chat is sucky. Have one for each direction. Maybe even have ones where you can swap out and make your own palette. I noticed that this is the same thing they had in the first game, so I think they should have upgraded this. I mean, it's a small detail, but I think small details like this would help differentiate the two games. I think a bigger change they could have done would have been ha have the maps be more expansive. I'm not talking about making the maps bigger, but you can spray walls and stuff and traverse up them. Problem is, most walls you can't ink, and even if you can, they have like a lip on them, so you can't get up to the top. I see that they use it to keep a team from easily getting into the other spawn, and also to direct game flow, but I think more open-endedness and verticality would be good. They did try a radical change. There are completely new special weapons, special powerful abilities you can use once you splat enough turf. A great way to encourage people to do the freaking objective. They completely scrapped the ones from the old game and you have completely new ones. I'm not entirely sure why they did this. I heard it was for balancing reasons, but y'all could have reworked them. Part of me thinks it's mainly to differentiate from the first game, but I think that's a garbage way to go about doing it. Another thing I want to say is that the special weapons and your grenade light akin special weapons are directly linked to your main weapon. Which I wish you could choose which one individually, but I guess it's so you can't mix up some overpowered sets. One last and final complaint, kind of a big one that I have towards this game is, I hear it has really great aiming, like with its gyro sensors, like you can turn that on, there's like a special mode, and it's pretty much from what I heard, it's very accurate, like if you were actually using like a mouse instead of a unreliable analog. Well, apparently, you can't do that while laying down. I don't know why. I'm a college student who lays on his bed and doesn't have a TV, so I literally can't use it. At first, maybe you could center it, but only centers it from side to side. Instead, I just look straight up in the sky and can't use it at all, and it kind of sucks, because this game barely has any auto-aim. I don't even know if it even does have any auto-aim to compensate. So, yeah, if that happens to you... Get high spread weapons, just saying. The more I think about this game, the more things come up in my head, and then the more I gotta re-record, so I'm done rambling. I probably have other thoughts, but those are all my mental notes that I put on a Word document, read poorly, and slapped over a low effort game footage. I'm gonna do the same to Sonic Mania since it's finally on PC, and I just beat it with all the emeralds, so I'll get right to working on it. 
Yeah, I got it on PC instead of a Switch, so at least you'll get actual direct gameplay footage. Anyways, I'm liking this game and playing the fish pun out of it. I've been playing it so much that I pushed back this vid by two weeks. It may be too similar to the first one, but this is a great time nonetheless. If you're thinking about getting it, definitely do. If you didn't play the first one, do yourself a favor and don't miss out on this one too. Between this and ARMS, I wonder if Nintendo will continue to make new and creative IPs that take genres and completely turn them on their heads. Until next time, I'm TreyGamer58, and remember, be a broody. Ink the frickin' spawn area!